steady light. And today it's coffee time. <laughs> You know, each day that you spend with the Lord, you gradually learn to accept what it is that He has for you each day, that you just anticipate the fun things. But when you're in pain or when you're suffering or going through some trial or tribulation, you accept it as being from his hand that it's best for you. And that's part of exercising faith. That's part of knowing that God knows best and we do not. Sometimes some of the things we go through are just consequences of our own actions. Sometimes they're planned by him and allowed to happen so that he could direct us in a certain way or a certain direction. Sometimes they're direct attacks from the enemy or the world and its ways. Sometimes they're just simply distractions. Sometimes they're just trials and you'll learn through them and gradually you get to the place where it doesn't matter which, which it is or what it is. You just <laughs> trust him for it. In daily life, <clears throat> You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God, priests of God and of Christ. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You know, people, in response to love, want to give love. And... When you are loved, you feel that emotional tie, that connection, that feeling of desire towards the person that loves you. And when God does that, a lot of people respond immediately, but there are times when God is silent that we have to accept the fact that he loves us more than feel like he loves us. And when we do, I think you'll find that if you could see beyond your present circumstances to really the heart of God, you'll find that when you choose to accept God's love, when you don't feel like it, that's when God smiles. It may sound corny, but it's true. He delights in knowing that and seeing that we've grown to a place of understanding that He is love. We made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, 
Let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, I think it's easy to think we need something when it's just something we want. I know there are lots of things that at times I think I want until I get them, so I really try to ask God to keep me from the things I want and just give me the things I need because often, just like uh, accumulating junk, you know, you you go into your garage one day if you have a garage and you realize you've collected all this junk you need to get rid of. Or if you're living in a house or an apartment and you need to move, you get ready to pack and you realize you've got all this extra junk that you need to either pack it and drag it around with you or get rid of it. I think that God wants us freed up more often than he wants us bound up. That he would prefer that we streamline our lives to the bare necessities of what we need as opposed to what we want and the comfort with which we accumulate things rather than with which we do the things that God said. I think if we did what God said, we would find that those things we've accumulated could be used to meet someone else's need. And in that way, we would be binding ourselves together in helping one another in love. It's only a thought, but it might be something you want to take to the Lord in prayer. And see what he would have you to do.